To finish any table runner by quilting it and then adding binding, this is the tutorial for you. I will be showing you how to do this using my Valentine's Day table runner. If you're interested, I do have a link to that tutorial in the description down below. You will need batting. I like to use a low loft cotton batting. You will need a backing fabric as well as fabric for your homemade binding and a matching thread. Sometimes I use all purpose thread, sometimes I'll use cotton thread. That is more of a personal preference. So the first thing that you will do is you will lay your backing fabric right side facing down. Now in this tutorial I'm using white fabric so it doesn't really matter which side is face up but you really want the wrong side facing up because then you will lay your batting on top of that and then find Finally, you will lay your table runner top on top of that right side facing up. Then you will cut around the fabric and the batting so that you've got about an inch and a half to two inches extra hanging out past all four sides of your table runner. Now we have to attach all three pieces of fabric together. To do this, you can either use basting pins or basting spray. I prefer to use my 505 basting spray, so for this I am going to use the spray, however, if you want to use the pins, make sure that you are attaching pins all over the place. The more pins, the less your fabric will move when you are quilting it together. If you do decide to use a spray base, you do need to use it in a well ventilated area and please follow the directions on the can itself. Once all three layers have been basted together, then it's time to take it to your sewing machine and start the quilting process. To do this, I like to use a walking foot. Most sewing machines come with a walking foot but if you don't have a walking foot or you don't want a walking foot, you can still do this entire process without it. Now before we take our table runner to the sewing machine, grab yourself some grippy gloves. For myself, I like to use these clean garden gloves. You can buy quilters gloves as well if you would prefer, which I can link in the description down below. Now there are numerous ways that you can quilt your table topper together. This method that I'm showing you here is the stitch in the ditch method, which is literally that. I'm going to follow my seams and try to stitch inside those seams. Go slowly when you're doing this. And of course, if this is something that's too intimidating for you, what you can do is you can put your sewing foot along the edge of that seam and sew right alongside the seam instead. Once you are done quilting all three layers together, now it's time to trim around the entire outer edge and square up our project. To do this, start on the short side of your table runner, lining up your ruler as best you can with the seams and with the outer edges so that your first cut is as straight as possible because we are going to use that cut moving forward. So now you will turn your table runner so that you are looking at the corner where your straight cut is at the top. Line up your ruler so that it's along that top straight edge and now you do not want to focus on the seams in your table runner because they can confuse you. They are no longer to be trusted. So trust your ruler and start cutting down that entire edge focusing on on that straight edge. Then when you get to that bottom section, you will turn your table runner again using that top edge as your straight edge. Line your ruler along that and cut so that you've created a nice square corner once again. You'll do this all the way around the entire outer edge. And now it's time to make our homemade binding. To do this, you will measure the entire outer edge of your table runner and add about 20 inches to that measurement to make sure that you are making enough binding. Then cut your strips of fabric at two and a half inches or three inches if you would like. If you want flexible homemade binding, you can cut your strips along the bias of your fabric, but I find that's only helpful when you're working with curves and table runners tend to be straight edges. So I like to cut my fabric in nice straight strips and then to connect your strips together you will lay two of your edges right sides on top of each other on an angle and then you can mark from point to point that way you have a good line to sew across then cut the excess fabric away and now you have a very very long strip of fabric take that to your iron and press your fabric wrong sides together in half Once you've done this, then you can lay it alongside the outer edge of your table runner. And this is where we are going to do the no math method for our binding. Open up that edge a little bit and fold your fabric into a triangle. Then fold back the rest of the fabric. 
Take it to your sewing machine and you will sew a quarter inch seam along that outer edge, making sure not to sew over that folded portion. Then leave yourself about an inch and then you can start sewing around the entire table runner at that quarter inch. When you get to your corner, stop a quarter inch away from the outer edge. Turn your fabric so that you can sew off towards the corner. Then you can fold your fabric upright and then back down, putting it back under that sewing foot and just put your needle in about a quarter inch in again, back stitching towards the outer edge and then going forward again. Do this all using a quarter inch seam allowance. Do this for each corner. When you get to the opposite end, trim your binding so that you don't have a really long tail and we are going to tuck it inside the little pocket that we made earlier and then finish sewing across that outer edge, sealing it all in. Now it's time to fold our binding over to the other side. You can press your fabric if you want it to be nice and crisp and a little bit easier to sew along the outer edge. I like to clip it all in place before I bring it back to the sewing machine and then sew along that outer edge as close as you can to the edge of the binding. By doing this, you will leave a seam on the opposite side inside the binding itself. It really won't be noticeable. And that is how to add the binding to your table runner.